This Week at NASA. Landing gear down and locked. After more than 30 years, NASA's shuttle era has come to a close. Atlantis made a picture-perfect pre-dawn landing at the Kennedy Space Center during STS-135's 200th orbit of Earth. Mission complete, Houston. After uh, serving the world for over 30 years, the space shuttle turned its place in history and it's come to a final stop. Brought safely home after 13 days of stocking up the International Space Station for the post-shuttle era was the STS-135 crew. Commander Chris Ferguson, pilot Doug Hurley, and mission specialists Sandy Magnus and Rex Walheim. It's a great day to be here and to welcome the STS-135 crew back home. I personally want to salute them and everybody who's been involved in this program. Although we got to take the ride, um, we sure hope that everybody uh, who has ever worked or touched or looked at or envied or admired a space shuttle um, was able to take just a little part of the journey with us. In all, Atlantis made 4,848 orbits of its home planet throughout 307 days in space. The orbiter traveled almost 5.3 million miles over 33 flights. As I stood out on the runway and stared at it, I looked at this uh, winged vehicle and I thought about all the systems and when they were designed back in the 70s, and it was a true marvel. Here in the sonic booms, uh, as uh, Atlantis came home for the last time, really made it uh, drive home to me that, that uh, this has been a heck of a program. Everybody feels good that we got the crew home safely, and uh, we're looking forward to our next challenges. After being towed from the runway, Atlantis was parked outside Orbiter Processing Facility 2 for several hours, while workers walked around and photographed the shuttle. You guys rock. Thanks for all that you do, uh, all that you've done over the last 30 plus years. Uh, you know, the astronaut office is uh, indebted to you all. We've seen you firsthand at how you process this vehicle and how it is your baby. The space flight business really does run in our blood. The pride you take in your work, the care you take in your work, the dedication, the passion, you are what makes it possible for us to have these very challenging missions and succeed. This was also the setting for an employee appreciation event hosted by two former shuttle astronauts, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden and Kennedy Center Director Bob Cabana. We got a lot to celebrate today. An outstanding mission, a successful program for 30 years. But, you know, in the end, the space shuttle is just hardware. What really makes NASA, what makes KSC, is each and every one of you. This final shuttle flight makes the end of an era, but also the start of a remarkable new chapter in our nation's story of exploration. With 135 missions flown over 30 plus years, the iconic shuttle, NASA's space transportation system, has left a legacy worthy of celebration. Lessons learned during these past decades will serve as stepping stones for the new era of human space exploration to follow. While Shuttle Atlantis is deserviced in OPF-2, Orbiter Discovery will reside in Kennedy's Vehicle Assembly Building, the VAB. It was recently shuttled there from OPF-2. Discovery is being prepared for public display at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, Stephen F. Udvarhazy Center in Virginia. Its last mission was STS-133, conducted earlier this year. Well, I want you to stick your chest out and say, my mom, my dad, my aunt, my uncle, my sister, they work for NASA. Administrator Charles Bolden helped kick off Take Your Children to Work Day at headquarters. Geared toward children ages 7 to 15, the event featured hands-on activities, presentations, and demonstrations to teach children about space, aeronautics, chemistry, and the work we do at NASA. So you can go back and say, this is what they do. And if you want to see something about it, go to the NASA website. Go to www.nasa.gov and you can see what my mom and dad do. My first job out of college was working for none other than John H. Glenn. Deputy Administrator Lori Garver joined Center Director Ray Lugo in officiating at the Glenn Research Center's annual Honor Awards ceremony. The awards were presented to individuals who've made significant contributions to the agency. Uh, 
but I was, I, I grew up in the Cold War. While at Glenn, Garver also sat down with 25 high school and college interns from three programs that offer support and direction for young men and women to undertake NASA careers after furthering their education in science, technology, engineering, and math. And now, centerpieces. Rising high school seniors from around the Commonwealth spent a week of their summer at NASA Langley planning a mission to Mars. It takes all kinds of things to make that mission successful. The Virginia Aerospace Science and Technology Scholars, also known as VAS, participated in an online program during the school year, and more than 100 students were given the opportunity to attend a week-long academy to heighten their interest in science, technology, engineering, and math. TRL is nine. VAS is the result of a partnership between the Virginia Space Grant Consortium and NASA Langley. Once it comes time to really start the crunching the numbers. For the students are broken down into four teams that work together to plan the mission to Mars. The teams were getting there, living there, working there, and mission integration. During the week, students had the opportunity to hear from astronaut Roger Crouch. I'm a physicist, and when I was working here at Langley, I worked on heat shield materials, and then I worked on electronic materials, and then I worked on <clears throat> different kinds of experiments that needed to go into space. Between researching and team meetings, students participated in an activity to simulate communication in space by having a team member act as a rover. The rover must follow instructions from the rest of the team acting as a mission control from another room. They also worked on their robotic skills, having to assemble and program their very own rover. For our habitat, we decided to use a single joint airlock. At the end of the week, the students presented their final mission to a panel of experts. The ISRU systems would be initially used to produce enough fuel for the Mars Ascent vehicle. And, uh, for example, uh, this camera system that I put together. The International Space Station Program Office at the Johnson Space Center partnered with the Glenn Research Center to highlight the unique research opportunities offered by the world's laboratory in microgravity. Held in Cleveland at the Great Lakes Science Center, this Destination Station Forum noted the accomplishments of the ISS National Laboratory and promoted future opportunities for commercial, academic, and government research and technology development. All engines running. Launch commit. Lift off. We have lift off at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Forty years ago, astronauts Dave Scott, Jim Irwin, and Al Worden took off from the Kennedy Space Center headed into lunar orbit. It was the fourth mission to land humans on the moon and featured the first deep space EVA executed by Worden. The voyage also saw the first flight of the lunar roving vehicle, which astronauts used to explore the geology of the Hadley Real Apennine region of the moon. Oh, what a big mountain that Hadley is. Yeah, it's beautiful. The LRV allowed Apollo 15, 16, and 17 astronauts to survey the lunar surface farther away from the lunar module than ever before. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.